So it's getting to that season. Tournaments are about over. The water's getting cold. This is an opportunity for you to get out and catch some very big fish. Um, I didn't do it for years, and Andy Buss got me out doing it. And I thank him for that. Some good fish can be caught in that cold water if you can stand being out there. For those of you that are going to continue fishing, I'm just going to show you what I do to put new line on. It's that time. Um, I'm going to end up putting braid on a baitcaster and fluorocarbon on a spinning rod. I'm a big braid guy, let me tell you. My other spinning rods, yeah, they're braid. Baitcasters, braid. I have one with fluorocarbon. So as you can see, the line's a little low on the spool. And last time I was out, I made a few casts with it. This is what I come across. So basically when I casted, you can see the knot here where I tied braid to braid. Just a couple simple overhand knots is all I ever use. When the reel gets that low, I change it. I only put 75 or 100 yards on. And just so you guys know, I do use 20, 30 pound, whatever I got laying around the house, just kind of junk line or old braid for backing. I'll fill about half a spool and let her be. And yeah, I just use Power Pro. It's 20 pound test. It's six pound diameter, guys. Trust me, them fish ain't seeing it. This is a 300 yard spool. I usually get three reel fulls. Because like I said, I only put 75 to 100 yards on at a time. So these are both the ends of my line. What I did was light it with a lighter and just make a small ball on the end. All I usually do is just simple overhand knots. And honestly, I'll only usually do two. Then I'll pull them together. That's all you need, because you're not going to get down to that anyways. Those balls with that lighter make it to where they don't slip out. And I'll show you how I use that on my lure also. It's not going to take a ton of resistance, but for what we're using for backing, it'll work perfect. So all I usually do, guys, I have a chair out in the garage. I'll set it in the chair and just make it so it unwinds this way. You don't need a lot of tension on it. Whatever works for you. So I fill my spool to where it's just under. I hope you guys can see that. I don't fill it all the way to the rim. There's no need to. So this is the one I just re-spooled. You can see it's a piece of fun. But this one actually has a label still on it. They're both 7 to 1 gear ratio. These are torrents. I guess I can show you this way. 7 to 1 uh, to me is perfect for a chatterbait. Simply because you got all the cranking power you need when they're running at you. And... If you need to, you can just slow or slow down, slow wind. You know, you don't have to have 5 to 3 gear ratio for a chatterbait. I just wind slower. The rods I use, they're just Bass Pro Shop qualifiers. Both of these, I'm hoping you guys can see that. They're 7.6 medium heavy action, extra fast. These rods have been great for me. I can't complain a bit. It's the only thing I throw that chatterbait on. So, of course, I throw a Z-Man 3 8 ounce chatterbait. This is a green pumpkin. It's got the red crawl wheeler whacker on it. That's what I've been throwing here uh, a little bit. I always use a Palomar knot on my chatterbaits. A polymer knot is simply go through your eye and then go back through. So you have your tag line and your main line together with a loop on the other end. 
like so. Give yourself a little extra room. And what you want to do is just tie an overhand knot. And what I do is grab that loop and pull it through. So it's it's basically just an overhand knot with your main line and your tag line. And then you have your loop. Grab your lure, pull it through, and then snug up both lines. So what I like to do here is take my tag line. You guys know I use a lighter a lot on braid. And I burn that tag line. Okay, what that does is it puts a little ball at the end. I'm hoping you can see that. That will not pull through. Okay. I know a lot of guys say braid slips, this and that. That's not coming through. So you can see the fluorocarbon rod that I have, this line is just twisted to be. I haven't changed it. I'm going to show you guys how I put fluorocarbon on. So guys, I do the same thing on my spinning reels. I'll only take the line halfway off the spool. You're never going to go down that low. If you do, it casts like crap. You want a full spool to make sure you make them long casts. So over the years, I've used the Seaguar Red Label. This is strong and highly abrasive resistant. I've used this stuff religiously. It is a little tougher to cast sometimes. It seems like it's a little, I don't know, a little thicker. Even though the Invisex is the same everything. Same diameter, same pound test, everything. I'm going to try this now. I've heard good things with it. But uh, I will go right back to Red Label if need be. So when it comes to tying your main line from your reel and the new line together, for fluorocarbon or mono, I do something a little different. I just put them together. And then I just tie overhand knots. Usually two. And the reason I do that is because if you try tying them together, they end up slipping out. So this route, it goes pretty good together. So after I have that, those tied together, then you can trim your tag lines a little short. I like nail clippers. They work really well. You have line cutters. You got everything out there. Use what you need. And that's it. You're ready to throw her on a reel. It's not that big a knot. You're down low on the spool. Shouldn't affect you in any way. I do try to wind it up to where it's in the middle of the spool. You got your top. You got your bottom. I try to keep it to where it's wound up right in the middle of the spool. For some reason, I just have better luck there. Guys, I use the same setup. I throw it in the chair. And I just let it unwind off the reel. So something I do after I fill the spool, I'll use the line tie here. I'll take off my spool. And thank you, Ray Smith, for talking me into doing this because I didn't do it before. And then you soak this in hot water. So all I'm gonna do is let that hot water run over it. I suppose you can put the hot water in a cup and let it set in it also. 
guess I just like to torture myself. What that hot water does is changes the memory of the line. So now it's going to adjust to where it's on the reel better. Guys, I can't say enough. It's an easy setup. Braid is phenomenal. When you get stuck in the pads, you could pull them out. You don't have to go up in there and mess up the whole area. You can pull them right out. It rips through pads like you wouldn't believe. Get you some Wheeler Whackers, throw them on the back of them chatterbaits and have at it. They work well on jig heads. They work well on many of things. But you got to get them and get out there and try them. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you out there.